River Saga. Ubara accepts Tinumbu's peace accord, says it's not a death sentence. And APC lawmakers cry to Tinumbu, accuse Governor Isilf Alia of running Bemi State like Parish. I am Bola Oba, and this is Plus Politics. Governor Siminalai Fubara has dismissed the criticisms and insinuations on the peace accord he agreed to with his predecessor yes on weekend in Abuja as brokered by, the, by President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu Fubara, who denied the claim that the, that the agreement was forced on him, also expressed his commitment to abide by the terms stated in the pact. The River State Governor who reiterated his earlier assertion that there is no price too much to pay for peace to reign in River State. Take a listen. Profound gratitude to our dear President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, His Excellency the President, Asuwaji Bola Tinibu, GCFRO, for wandering into near crisis situation that almost portrayed the prevailing peace in our dear state. Indeed, by this singular effort, our dear president has demonstrated that he loves River State and cherish nothing short of a reign of perfect peace in our state with his presidential peace proclamation on the 18th of December, 2023. Mr. President's peace proclamation has naturally elicited misreaction from our people and across the country. As a principal participant in the entire saga, I have taken some time to study the terms they are in and have come to the conclusion that the peace path is not as bad as it might be portrayed by those genuinely opposed to it. It is certainly not a death sentence. It affords some way towards a lasting peace and stability in our dear states. Accordingly, I reaffirm my acceptance of the Presidential Peace Proclamation and my commitment to implementing both the spirit and the letter of the Declaration in such a way and manner that will restore political stability to our dear state without compromising the collective interests of our people and our cherished and shared democratic value. Joining us Live is APC spokesperson, former APC spokesperson, Darlington Wajo. Hi, Darlington. Good, Good evening. Thanks for having me. Good to have you on Plus Politics. Yes, it's wonderful to be here. What do you make of your governor's uh, opinion about the peace pact? Well, I should tell you that. Um, if we had made uh, this broadcast, uh, like say, 24 hours after the news of this uh, proclamation of peace broke, uh, several of the persons who descended into the arena to offer opinions, no matter how genuine their intentions were, uh, would have uh, maybe stayed uh, remained laid back or refuse to say anything, or at best criticize the entire uh, resolution. Because um, let me say this on the streets of Portugal, the thinking is that is either the governor never uh, um, signed that peace pact, which is uh, seemingly seen as being one sided, or that he was forced or coerced into entering into. Uh, such an agreement. So if you had made this uh, broadcast uh, 24 hours or less after the news broke, maybe so many of the persons who offered the opinions wouldn't have done so. Uh, but ultimately, and he has consistently, even his uh, Commissioner for Information had earlier, less than, less than 48 hours after the pact, came out to state that his principal signed 
depart without coercion. But those who seem to want to make an industry of it, those who want to opportunistically uh, lay into the whole uh, melodrama as it eventually panned out, kept coming out, uh, rallies were held, some so-called elders uh, were also throwing in their... So if you really look at it, uh, a large number of a large number of the political political space in River State mm -hmm. may have gotten themselves mm -hmm. clobbered up by what is seeming to be a progression of reconciliation between uh, between the Godfather and the Godson. Well, I do know actually. Uh, of uh, the tractable saga, because I still see it as a tractable. Because I'm looking at the operationability of the uh, entire gamut of the peace pact. I'm looking at its operationability. Now, uh, some of the uh, terms or conditions uh, uh, therein are somewhat, um, have some legal entanglements to it. And so one wonders what becomes of the, uh, the position of uh, the man who a competent court has already recognized as speaker of the River House Assembly. What becomes of that uh, court recognition to that individual? What becomes of the, the budget that the governor himself has already assented to. So a, a, a lot of legal implications. Some I, I I think two days ago or there about or yesterday about uh, two lawyers who had gone to court uh, the terms of that. Uh, peace pact, and also to determine, for the court to determine if it was right uh, having uh, as, uh, Edison in a year recognized as speaker, not being party to that particular reconciliatory process. So I think that in the coming days, we might run into a hitch in terms of the implementation of the entire gamut of that uh, uh, particular proclamation, because I, I do not think it is here to guru. I do not think it is here to guru when it comes to the reconciliatory uh, efforts in River State. And so for those who intervene, who offer the opinions, they never, uh, I, I do not see them as opportunists. Given the scenario, given the fact that the, one of the major actors in this uh, in this uh, whole saga, the former governor of River State, who is today FCT minister, is somebody who had clearly in time past challenged federal authorities and federal minds. In fact, he had described himself as capital G governor. If you remember that phrase, the use of that phrase by uh, 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 the FCT minister. So for somebody like that, the character of uh, the LCT minister coming to accept, if, if the table were to be turned the other way, would he have accepted these terms and conditions? That persons who resigned willfully, who resigned from cabinet, should be reabsorbed into cabinet. And so you see that um, there is plenty of, uh, there have been plenty of trust issues with such individuals. How do you now uh, force them down the truth of the sitting governor to accept them, to work with them without uh, having fears of them uh, being, uh, uh, having their loyalty with someone else? He would not have accepted that somebody who does not offer him 101% loyalty would be sitting in cabinet with him, he would not accept that. So as reverse people, we know that he wouldn't have accepted those terms and conditions. And so those who intervene cannot be described as opportunists. They are persons who have read the politics of River State and understood and do understand the character of the major uh, player in this instance.
who would never have accepted some terms and conditions? Uh, one cannot reasonably fault some of the important uh, booby traps that you have identified, uh, one being the fact that uh, erstwhile commissioners who voluntarily resigned uh, should ordinarily be represented to uh, the status of assembly, to the state assembly. Yes. Uh, for reabsorption into cabinet, uh, mm -hmm. the recognition of the 20, is it 25 or 27? 25, state, yes. Who voluntarily and openly expressed their defection uh, mm. in an environment that is not totally consistent with the pronouncement of the Supreme Court. On Abegunde, mm -hmm. uh, that is the, the head to tail division of their party, and uh, the insistence. The insistence of the 25 that they mm. will stay, they will stay as uh, yeah. as bona fide APC members when ordinarily they were elected into parliament mm. as uh, PDP representatives. Uh, all these mm. booby traps cannot be faulted. But I'm sitting here and I'm thinking: Have you countenanced the fact that those who may have gone to the courts now for clarification, and in any way, shape, or form, does not include Edison Ayer himself. These are people who the courts are likely going to term as meddlesome interlopers. People who the courts may likely say lack locals. So if Edison, mm. if Edison is loyal to the governor and is playing behind the governor, and the governor is predisposed to working with what he has now pronounced to not be a death sentence, I really don't see any concern for likely legal entrapment that you have reasonably and logically uh, highlighted. What, do you, what would be your response to my, to my own, um, my, my own <laughs> illustration? What is that has to happen for the legal impediments to be uh, completely cleared? Uh, because I see those as booby traps that could uh, 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 tamper with the operationality of the terms and conditions of uh, the Peace Pact. Now, I think that uh, Edison and he is having been so recognized by a competent court in River State, it has to write to INEC to withdraw uh, the declaration of uh, uh, the, uh, the declarations he made as speaker. He had to withdraw that proclamation that those seats, the seats of the 25 lawmakers have been declared vacant. He needs to make that withdrawal. He also needs to withdraw his suits in court, and in order to make it easier for the process of reconciliation to, to be holistic. And other than that, I do not see any other reason or any other way to meander or to navigate out of this peace process without having a legal encumbrances. Number one, he needs to withdraw his uh, uh, court cases in court. And number two, he needs to withdraw the letter that he had written to INEC declaring the 25 disease of the 25 lawmakers vacant. When this is done, I think they cannot go back to the drawing table and then return back to status quo before the crisis and status quo ante before the crisis had begun. Uh, you, you, you speaking as though he got a judgment from the court. He got an ex parte injunction. Which in itself. Yes, no, uh, no, which, but, which, but as, no. In, in law, in law, I am not a lawyer, but I do not need to be a lawyer, a lawyer to understand the fact that if you have an expert in favor of your sitting down there to anchor this program this evening, 
Nobody can push you out of that seat on the that same God vacates that order to the higher jurisdiction in this instance. The, by, by, uh, you, 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 you may to ask you. You may want to. You may want to research. Yes. You may want to research this, and I don't pretend to be a lawyer too. But many of no, us. No, no, no. I, I, I do I'm not coming. need to research it. No, I do not need to research it. I do not need to research it at all. I said he needs the court, that same court, the court, uh, Justice Monimans court, to vacate that entire order. You cannot, uh, even even though it has a seven day uh, shelf life. It cannot vacate itself. It has to be vacated by that court, or a higher court will have to set it aside. If not, it remains. I, I, I like the fact. I like the fact that it came from you. That the expert order has a fourteen day. You said seven. I'm made to believe that it has. A yes. 14 day shelf seven, life. Seven subjects is subject to the new one. Oh, the network is uh, the network is playing up. I, I, I really, I really fancy. I can the, hear you. I can hear oh, you. Okay. Loud and clear. I can hear I, you. I, I really fancy the inherent logic. Uh, the inherent logic of your of your reasoning, uh, but the point is that um, a, a friend of mine recently joked mm -hmm. about the issue that uh, lawyers and judges cost this mess, but the, <laughs> but that they are very good students of real politics. That once they have seen mm -hmm. the finger of the president and the omnipotence power that that finger could do through the NJC. Uh, that person to told me, but uh, don't worry. Uh, they, will, they, will, mm -hmm. they, will make a clean, they will make a clean sweep of the mess that they have caused. I, I'm not saying that's my opinion. I'm just telling. Yes. <laughs> I'm just telling. Yes, but, 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 but what I've just said, the opinion I just offered is what it is. That uh, any here has to necessarily withdraw that matter before Justice uh, uh, Monima Danagogo, and then the court will now have to strike out the matter officially. And so other than that, there is no other way because you cannot have the executive arm that in this instance, the governor, who is the major beneficiary in court of the whole peace pact. Now, you cannot have him legislate on judicial orders. It is not possible. No, I, and that, I, I, will be, I, I, that will be tantamount to, to, to a constitutional crisis. And so we, we are already, we, we already, we are, is already on suspension in River State. We already have constitutional crisis. Uh, the, the, what, what, what is happening now? I feel that democracy is on suspension in River State. I, 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 I don't know about that, but consumer crisis, any, any uh, intelligent follower of uh, political activities would know that already there is, the only thing that is uh, happening now is the unraveling of the consumer mess that is in place in rivers. But having said that, mm. I, I, think, exactly. I, I exactly. think I want to agree with you, I think I want to agree with you that... Uh, Addison AA still has some very strategic role to play uh, in his loyalty to the governor, not the former mm -hmm. governor, in his loyalty to the incumbent governor, to the still has yes. to, a, a role to play. I think this is the point at which we have to leave it. I'm enjoying the conversation. I'm enjoying the rationalizations and the and the intellectual intrigues that you are bringing up. But you know what? Uh, time is a dictator in matters like this. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Understanding. I, 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 would have loved, I would have loved to ask you about, you know, former APC spokesperson, what do you think about the interim, the interim contraption or the, uh, the emergency contraption with which those of you who were, uh, who were elected into mm -hmm. office, we're, we're kind of sent, sent off. 
with a view to... Well, well, well uh, because there is no time, I, but I, th I, I was thinking that you should have given that bit of um, uh, the reverse uh, drama. I, I thought you should have given us some time to talk about that. However, I, I know that there will be other times. But let me say this quickly. Number one, the constitution of the APC, the constitution that we currently operate, that's uh, the one amended on the 26th day of March 2022, does not give the NWC powers to dissolve any organ of the uh, party. Now, uh, the neck of the party under Article 13 sub uh, 3B uh, uh, has powers to dissolve every other organ of, of the party. Now, the last time that the neck had powers to run the party, administratively and otherwise, was on the 20th day of April 2022, when the NEC uh, gave powers to uh, former uh, chairman Abdullah Yadamu in order to ensure that uh, we had a very smooth and uh, seamless uh, conventions. And that, that, that power was transferred for a period of 90 days. It expired in July. And so, uh, other than that, the NEC has never transferred its powers in total to the NWC of the APC. I stand to be corrected. Then on, on, on the third day of April, uh, on the third day of August, rather, the day uh, Ganduje was ratified as national chairman of the APC, the NEC only made three resolutions. Number one, approval for uh, external auditors to audit the accounts of the party. Number two, gave the, the NWC powers to fill up the spaces that uh, occurred uh, as a result of designations. The National, the Office of the National Woman Leader, the Deputy uh, National Publicity Secretary, and those offices that uh, got, uh, got uh, vo uh, that, that uh, uh, spaces were created as a result of either persons who went to contest elections or persons who got appointments. And, and these were the key areas that the NEC resolved uh, on the 3rd of, uh, of uh, August. And then the ratification of Abdullah Yadamu and Ajibola Bashiru. These were the three major decisions of NEC on the 3rd of August. Oh, oh, oh. The NEC never gave power to Ganduje. Darling, the word you. Of, uh, uh, validly elected structures. Darling, the word you. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, constitutional crisis, especially self. Mm -hmm self-orchestrated constitutional crisis, like lies. You would need another lie to cover a lie, and when you have a major constitutional, exactly. cri when you have a major constitutional crisis, it will naturally, naturally uh, precipitate other constitutional crises. So, so I wish you and your party, I guess you are in court too. You, you are one of the... Uh, exactly. Okay, I, I, I wish you guys the best in view of the fact that uh, there is a similar resolution now between the incumbent and his godfather. Maybe it will spill mm -hmm. over to the architecture, the governance architecture of the APC in River State. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. we'll go on a short break. Thank you for having me. And when we're back, we'll take on the second segment of the show.